Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation for hour two of our two hour special basketball finish. Now we move to the football portion of the show. It's alumni day. We're getting set for the alumni game tonight. And uh, what a way to do it. A happy Friday indeed. I'm Spencer Linton and it's my pleasure now to welcome in three of the members of the 1984 BYU Football National Championship team. They are Robbie Bosco, Glenn Kozlowski and David Mills. Gentlemen, this is a fantastic trio. Welcome to Studio B. Robbie, uh, Alumni Day is always fun. Uh, last night we taped a 1984 special and you got to see a ton of your teammates. Like, those are unique occasions. It's very rare that that many of you get together. So what has uh, last night and today been like for you as you've re-engaged with those guys? Well, like you're right. I mean, it's really been probably 20 years since I've been able to see these guys together and do stuff like that. And and with my 14 years of coaching, there's just, I know guys from all, a lot of years. And so it's been super fun to see people, to engage with a lot of our teammates yesterday is oh. the most fun. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Cause Are you bored or was it just me? <laughs> You, th you always said I was boring when I played, so well, what's the you difference? Are. <laughs> so, so, anyway, anyways, I mean, you weren't throwing him the ball. Yeah. <laughs> he was really but boring then. He learned. He learned quickly to be on my side during those game days, for sure. Um, certainly, if you want to get the ball, right? Yeah. You got, you oh, got well, to play the game. Even during weekdays, I would, or, you know, I tried to turn everybody against Robbie. It didn't work out well for me that day. <laughs> he did that one time. Never he, did it again. He made this plan where everybody ignore Robbie. Sluggo wasn't quite like that. <laughs> he came to me and says, hey, Cause is trying something Double like that. Double agent. I didn't he realize was. that. So anyways, we'd be in practice. We'd do a little thing. Cause is wide open. I'd pump fake it and just took off running. And Norm would be like, what are you doing? He goes, oh, Cause is trying to be a tough guy right now. So I'm kind of ignoring him right now. <laughs> I'll throw it to him in the game, but right now... I'll and here's the worst him. part. Norm goes, okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> he didn't care. Like, okay, that makes sense. But then after practice, Kyle came up to me and says, I'll never do that again. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> lesson, yeah, learned. lesson learned. Oh, yeah. There you go. yeah. Now, now I don't have to worry about it because he's not throwing the ball to me. So I could say boring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no consequences. Yeah, yeah, zero. Glenn, uh, I learned something about you and David last night. You coached with each other at the high school level for seven years. A lot of BYU fans don't know that, myself included. Uh, David, what's that like for you to coach alongside Glenn at the high school for seven years? Uh, honestly, our personalities were pretty much the same as they were on the sideline as they were on the field. One of us was very loud and always in an official's <laughs> ear, and one of us was very quiet and trying to get things done. I won't. You tell me who's who, but take a wild guess, Spencer. Which one's loud? <laughs> no, but it was. It was. We went out to a program out there that was rock bottom. And over a seven-year period, got him to understand how to play football and winning football. And it, it turned out very, very positive. We went through a lot of battles and made a, a very positive impact on a, a place out there, including ourselves. Outstanding. Well, not surprisingly, uh, you coached up some guys. And you come from a scenario where you had some legendary coaches around you. So, I mean, Glenn, what type of gems did you take from you know, the likes of Norm Chow and Lavelle Edwards and Roger French and these other guys that helped you in your own coaching career? Um, you know what, probably uh, Lavelle doing his personal priesthood interview, which I had no idea it was at my freshman year. I'm like, what is this? And he's asking about my life. Never wanted to talk about football. Um, I, I applied that quite a bit. Um, and I had a lot of, you know, Dave will say, we, they were not real good football players. We were small, slow, and friendly is how I described our team originally. And, uh, but, you know, they just got better and we worked at it. We taught them how to prepare every day. The little, you know, changing the culture, basically. And it took us seven years. It was not mm -hmm. easy. Robbie, you mentioned uh, your coaching days. And um, I know we're going big picture here, but to have Norm Chow with you last night on that panel and Mel Olson and, and some of these guys and, and see Patty Edwards, what did that mean to you to have those coaches with you and, and how they impacted how you live your life and how you coached when you were in that position? Yeah. First, it was great to see Norm. I haven't seen him for a long time. Probably one of the top coaches that I would say we've all been around. One of the smartest, and I would say the best play caller I, I, I've ever seen. And he just had a kind of a knack for all that. But just the way they kind of treated us. And it was so fun. Like when we would practice, Norm would let us joke around. And so we had a lot of fun in practice. But he also, when it was time to get serious, we were serious. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I tried to be like that a little bit as a, as a coach. 
And then like what Glenn was saying with Lavelle, I mean, Lavelle's one of a kind. I think he was a father figure to all of us. Um, he really had to be a father figure to this guy because <laughs> he was a little lost his first few years there at BYU. But after that, uh, we became great friends, and I love both these guys. David, what has it meant to you that you, one, chose to attend BYU and be around these guys and these coaches and win a national championship, and how has that shaped the course of your life? Really, uh, I, if I'm going to be honest with you, you chose BYU for a lot of selfish reasons. When I say that, here's where you thought you'd do the most growth, et cetera. So you call that selfish, you go into it. Then you run into people like that Lavelle's brought in and creates this culture, and all of a sudden they start to rub off on you, and you don't really realize the real impact until 40 years later, 20 mm -hmm. years later, 10 years later. And at the time, you're just going through it being a child, and, and people are trying to teach you. And, and it's a lifelong impact for a decision that was made by a 17-year-old kid. So... Last night, I also learned that the tight ends were asked to handle a lot in practice, and you went through some brutal physicality. What was it like to be a tight end on that BYU team and, and go through those practices against the physicality of the defenders you were facing? If you start going back through all the linebackers that I had to face from 1980 through 1984, <laughs> you got Glenn Red, Leon White, Kurt Gouveia, David Neff, Marv Allen, Kerry Whittingham. By the time I got to a game on Saturday, that was a pleasure because they would <laughs> beat you to death. You know. As they said last night, they hated the fact that the, the defense never really got recognition. So during practice, they'd make sure they understood defense was pretty important. And they let us know that. Plus, Dave never blocked anybody in the game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know what I used about. to have to go down in motion and block for Dave. For Kyle, are loud. you sure they had these drills in practice? I don't remember it, but, you, you know, know, maybe it did. <laughs> I'd like to see This is film. where it's at. They take reality and turn it to their side. <laughs> That's how it turns. So. I remember one time, I made a bet with Dave in, in 84. <laughs> on if he broke a tackle, I'd buy him a pizza. Okay. Now, you would think I'd buy him, what, 100 pizzas? 20 pizzas? 71. 10 pizzas? 71 pizzas? I bought him one pizza. And even that one was questionable because the guy grabbed his ankle, he stumbled, and then fell, and he goes, well, that's breaking a tackle. The thing I love about Glenn, he never lets the truth get in the way of a good story. Is that not true? Did I buy you one pizza or not? Let me, let me make this a little bit simple. Dave never dropped a pass. Probably the best most consistent guy had 71 catches that year amazing cause on the other hand <laughs> i threw four, four of my interceptions were bouncing off his well, chest because i was always hurt and, but I, I took the blame for it but i'm like you know <laughs> i i hung in there but anyways these both guys probably 130 catches in 84 Incredible. between the two of them so it was fun to have these guys on my team and being able to throw it on David, do you love that you had more catches than Glenn? Is that, is that like something that... When, when he gets really chirpy, all I had to do was say, hey, but that was also part of the fun of it because you go back through some games where there'd be a game where he'd have six or eight catches and I or didn't want to hear it anymore. Like that. I didn't want to hear it anymore. So the six, next week... Ten, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> the next week I'd try and go get out more and I'm pretty sure... Well, I was triple covered. I'd hope you'd be open. <laughs> I mean, heck, the uh, cheerleader ran out one time and had a great form like tackle I said, on me against the uh, Air Force. A good story, right? <laughs> I'm running, and all of a sudden, this cheerleader just busts me, and a, a big girl. I mean, not to be disrespectful, but well, perfect form too when she took me down. That's was like, because wow. he was so slow <laughs> that anybody could keep up with that. <laughs> yeah. She came from the sideline and just turned in and took me out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, story time and a fantastic edition of Story Time with David Mills, Glenn Kozlowski, and Robbie ba Bosco as we continue on BYU Sports Nation. If you had to pick one moment or one game or one memory from the '84 season, and I know this is like the impossible question, but like, what's one that just automatically stands out, top of mind uh, about that season? Robbie, we'll start well, with you. Well, I'll say for me, um, I really struggled in the pit game. I watched it a couple years ago, and I'm like, man, I wasn't very good. And even after that game, we won, beat number three Pitt. I didn't know how good we were. I think a lot of guys thought we were going to be pretty good, but I didn't know. So to me, it was the Baylor game. The Baylor game, they beat us last year. We came out on fire. Mm -hmm. I threw six touchdown passes. We won 47 to 13. So for me personally, after that game, I was probably with everybody else like, okay, we're going to be pretty good this year. 
Glenn, what do you think as far as a memory or a moment or a game? I would say when Kelly Smith caught the uh, game-winning touchdown against Michigan and I knew we had won, that was the highlight for me. Mm. And I actually tackled him, probably the only time I ever tackled anybody, and I took him to the ground and tried to kiss him, couldn't, but I tried. <laughs> and it was just a great play. Again, I was open, I might point out. Robbie missed me, but I was wide open, triple covered, but you I was, was wide open. open Spencer. <laughs> you were triple covered, but I you were open. wide open. I, there was, if he'd thrown it high, I could have caught that ball. That's like, all. like you did to uh, tie the game, right? Back yeah, of the exactly. end zone? Exactly. And yeah. then Dave was also open, but he won't say that. <laughs> or were you open? I guess they bracketed you on the inside, didn't they? I was open every play. I just didn't have to tell anybody about it. Okay. <laughs> That's well, a good point. Well said. Uh, David, what's, what's the memory or moment for you from the 84 season? Um, probably on a personal note was our last home game, Utah State. It's senior night. Um, I was lucky enough to get my dad and my brother down on the mm -hmm. field. And so the last time I played in, uh, back then, Cougar Stadium, uh, Lavelle Edwards Stadium, got to share it with my dad and my brother who, Both you know. Pass, yeah. That it, uh, it was just a special moment for family for me. So oh, I love that. Uh, I do need to ask all of you about uh, the current state of BYU football now that because, listen, on the shoulders of giants and BYU being a respected brand, like you obviously were the major catalyst, a major catalyst in that effort. And so to see, one, BYU get to the Big 12, what was that like for all of you? And how did you feel like BYU uh, competed in year one of Big 12 play. That's a double-barreled question, but interested to hear your thoughts on that, Robbie. Yeah, well, look, at the Big 12 speaks for itself. It's one of the, probably in the top three conferences in the country. And so to get there with all the struggles that we had to go through was absolutely amazing. So I thought everybody felt like, man, if we could win four or five games, it's going to be great. Well, in reality, we should have beat Oklahoma, should have beat Oklahoma State. Um, and so I thought it was a great year. Even though we didn't make a bowl game, uh, I thought Kalani has it going on right now. Recruiting's good. We're bringing in top players. And so I feel like it's still on that upward trend. Glenn, what's it like for you to watch BYU play in the Big 12 as they approach year two? Um, I'm happy for him, and I'm really happy for Kalani. He was a little kid when we were playing, and uh, in fact, I think I gave him my gloves one game after the game, <laughs> threw it up to him, and he was like a seven-year-old, probably six-year-old. He was young. His father was just, you know, his father's still a wonderful man, but what a great guy he was when we were in college and just kind of looked after everybody, you know. So, But I'm happy for him. Uh, look. The Big 12 is a Big 12. It's going to be what it is. I, I do think you got to recruit LDS kids, first and foremost. And if you look at our team, we had a great combination of idiots, <laughs> me, smart, non-LDS kids that were wonderful. And then Dave was kind of a hybrid in the middle. And then like a Lewis Wong, who was an LDS, but might as well have been. And so you need that combo of everybody. And I think Kalani's doing that. And I'm more proud than anything, being half Polynesian, mm. You know, it was funny because Norman and I had talked about it, and that was a moment for us mm. that I felt like, wow, BYU has really changed. We've got a brown skinned coach, and I don't mean to, you know, I'm not trying to create controversy, but it meant a lot to me. For sure. Personally. You know, as a Polynesian kid, I, I was thrilled that, like, you know, we have arrived, at least at BYU, and, you know, he's going to do a great job. I'm proud of him. He'll continue to work hard, and, you know, they're in the right direction. They're going the right direction. David, what's it like for you to see the Big 12 logo on BYU's uniforms right now? You know, going back to our senior year, it's what we wanted. Go play against the best competition in the world. And, and I hope these, well, I know these young men are going to be appreciative of the opportunity they have. And it's kind of a 40-year-old dream, and they get to go live it. So it's going to be fun to watch them do it. I'm glad you got that pizza at least, David, from Glenn, okay? Yeah, and I, yeah. I'm, was, I'm sure he probably argued. owed you a few more, too. Uh, well, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll collect later. I won't be around <laughs> each other. Uh, Zero chance of that. No, I mean, uh, he, he did. I mean, Dave was so important to our team. And, you know, Steve Hamm. And there were so many guys, uh, Marv Allen. These are guys that going into the season, we were ranked like fourth or fifth in the whack when we were going in that year. And nobody knew what Robbie was going to be like. And that first pass that he threw to his grandma, I thought was pretty impressive because <laughs> he wanted to get it to his grandma first and then he'd Before, start playing. I mean, not? you were so awesome about making yeah, that. But, thank you. you know, once we settled in, but we, we talked about it all summer. And we felt like, because Pitt, Pitt was number three, ESPN, just upstart little crazy little, you know, sports uh, center was going to cover it na nationally. And, it was a chance for us to shine, and we felt if we won that, we could run, roll, and go undefeated. Do you Nobody guys, had ever do you guys remember when they were doing that? Pittsburgh was doing a pregame show. Beano Cook, I believe, was the name. 
Only guy that picked BYU to be pitched. There you right. go, old Bino. Old Bino Cook. Bino Cook. Bino, 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 Bino was with us, us, all, yeah. uh, Bino was with us all year. All year. Uh huh. Yeah. Game one on. Cool. So he was the anti Bryant Gumble that year. Yes. <laughs> time. Time. It's great to have all three of you with us. Hope you enjoy the rest of the Alumni Day events, um, and we appreciate your time and and the stories. Awesome stuff. Thanks, gentlemen. Thanks. Thank you.